Hey there, it's Nick. And it's Leah. Real quick thing before we get going. Please subscribe to our show and follow it. In whatever platform you're listening to us on. Yes, whatever app you're using right now, there's probably a plus button or a little bell or it says subscribe. Well, tap that, please. Just a quick little, and it makes such a big difference for us. We would really appreciate it. We really would. So please do that. And thank you. Thank you. And now let's start the show. Yay! Everybody, it's Nick Layton. And it's Leah Bonima. And we had so many great questions from you all in the wilderness. Ow! That, we have a bonus episode. So here we go. Our first question is, quote, should we toss our unopened food when we're leaving a hotel? For example, we bought pickles at the beginning of our trip and forgot they existed. So they were never opened. We don't like to waste food, but at the same time, we don't know how to dispose of the pickles. My mom debated leaving them for the housekeeper, but we weren't sure. We came to the conclusion that it would just create more work for them if they didn't want them or couldn't take them. So we decided to toss them ourselves. Was that the right thing to do? I think we, we've we discussed previously my first job was in housekeeping. I thought you were going to say my first love is pickles. I mean, it was hard for me to decide which I was going to say first, actually. <laughs> okay. So great call on that part. But we're going we're gonna to lead with the housekeeping. Okay. Um, And me personally, people would leave things in the room. Yeah. And I think if something is unopened and you're going to throw it away, I personally would rather you left it. Maybe I want it. Right. Or I know somebody who might or yeah. somebody else on staff or... Right. But I understand why it feels like a conundrum. Are you just creating more work for that person? Although my question is, okay, you disposed of the pickles, but what does that mean? Because in my mind, it just means you just threw the open pickles into the garbage in the hotel room and then like left the glass jar in the hotel room. Or did you like take the pickles outside of the hotel somewhere? Like, what did you do with the pickles? That's a good question. That was where my mind was going. It was like, oh, did you like go to the dumpster in the back of the hotel yourself? Like, well, what is happening with this pickle jar? Nick wants to know, where are the pickles now? Dove pickles. Donde esta pickles? Pickles, Zainar. Hodgevaj pickles. That means, <laughs> that means how are you pickles? Because I couldn't remember how to say where are. <laughs> Ue, the pickles. So, yeah, where are the pickles? Ich bin Pickles. Oh, that's different. I think I said I was a pickle. You are a pickle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which may be true. So I think, yes, if it's unopened and it's something that's not like total garbage that no one's going to want and there might be some value to someone else and it's not like some enormous thing, I feel like the pickle jar falls into the category of like, yeah, I think it's okay to leave it in a conspicuous spot. Yeah, like leave it out so... It's clear. And this is obviously that it's unused. Yeah, and you could even put a note on it and be like, hey, we love this brand of pickles. We couldn't take it back in our luggage. It's more than three ounces. And so if you know anybody who loves pickles, like, please enjoy. And don't leave that instead of a tip. No, oh gosh, no, no. <laughs> but it's good to leave a note. And I feel like actually so often in hotel rooms, we feel like we need to be coy or we we aren't allowed to leave a note. And it's sort of like, no, you could actually just like leave a note. Like, oh, this is your tip. Thank you for this day. Or like, these are pickles we didn't want. Hope it wasn't too much of an inconvenience. Hope someone likes pickles. Like, it's totally fine to actually like communicate and you don't have to like leave a mystery for whoever's like cleaning the room. I like all of those things. And I love that this is about pickles again. And I didn't realize there's so much pickle enthusiasm out there. I hope we can bring up pickles every week. Be careful what you wish for. May I say? Sure. I was out to dinner and I was like, what is this taste that I'm getting? Uh -huh. And I said, I think this is a dilly bean. And then the man next to me was like, what's a dilly bean? And I was like, What's a dilly bean? I I mean I, I I'm not entirely sure what a dilly bean is. Okay. I don't so, I don't know what you guys have been doing with your lives. <laughs> I assume it's a type of pickle based on the context of our it's conversation. A green, it's a green bean that's been pickled. They're in jars. Oh, Dill pickle. Okay. So it's a, a green bean. I pickled it. Okay. Dill pickle. It's a dill pickle green bean. And then people chop them up. Oh, you can either, I'll eat it like the spear, like a spear of a, or it's not a spear. I, I'll eat the bean. Uh huh. Or you could chop it up. And so then the guy next to me goes, no. And then when the, uh, when the waiter came over, he goes, what is that? And he goes, oh, it's a pickled bean. <laughs> and the guy was like, how did you know that? I was like, I did not know what dill You're dilly You're like, beans I have a very are. refined palate. <laughs> I am refined. <laughs> I know dilly beans. Okay. So our next question. What a crunch. His quote. Is it rude to ask people to take time off to attend a birthday party? I was recently invited to partake in some day drinking, but I was requested to take off work. I declined and I said I'd rather save my time off for vacation. I feel bad, but I also feel it's inappropriate to ask people to take time off. 
thoughts? My thought here is that the equation is that you shouldn't feel bad. No, no. An invitation is not a subpoena. And so I can imagine a world in which a person goes, hey, I'm going to take today off for my birthday and I'm going to go out. Mm -hmm. Did you want to take today off with me? Yeah. And you're like, unfortunately, I can't. And you're like, I can't. Yeah, I think that's fine. I do think, though, that the explanation for why you can't attend, I think that might come across in a way you might not intend. Because I think like, yeah, you're, you're like annoyed, like, oh, I, I can't like celebrate your birthday because I have to work and I can't use my vacation time for this. But I think by explaining it that way, it might sound like you're saying, oh, my vacation time is more important than you or is more important than our relationship or more important than your birthday, which could be true. But like, you don't have to say that. And I don't think we want them to like potentially hear that. I think also sometimes we feel like we're irritated that they would ask us to take work off. Right. And so, but then we feel guilty. So we feel the need to explain and we don't need to explain. We can just say we can't take work off. Yeah. And I guess that piece where it was like, oh, we feel bad about something. So we kind of actually like give more explanation than required to like justify our actions. This is actually when we get into trouble. And it's also, I always think it's funny where we feel, and I don't mean to speak for our literary, but I know I do this. I feel irritated, but then I feel guilty saying no. Right. So it's like, don't feel guilty saying no. You can't take work off. Yeah, just thank them for the invitation. And that's the end of it. And I can see a world in which a person was like, hey, I'm, I'm going to go out to whatever on my birthday. It's a work day. Do you want to come? I don't mind being invited and then being like, I can't make it. Like, I'd rather be invited and not be able to make it than not be invited. Oh, for sure. Oh, this would be so much worse if you just assume like, oh, you're working. I'm not even going to bother. And I'm going to make that decision for you, that RSVP decision for you. Yeah, that's not good. And I think that if this person invited you and then you're like, I'm sorry, I can't take off work. And then they got mad at you. Then you would be like, "Okay, you're out of line. I obviously have to work. Well, that's like having a destination wedding and being mad that people can't come. Yeah. And so they're like, I'm sorry, I didn't pick the destination wedding. That's on you. Yeah. You decided this. Yeah. You can go to New Zealand and I cannot make it. Although I'm going to New Zealand. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> sure. Well, if it's a Hobbit themed wedding, of course. <laughs> I'm there. I'm, I'm already there. I'm waiting for you with my elf ears. <laughs> so letter writer. At the end of the day, guests and hosts, they both have obligations. So yeah, you can ask, you can invite, you can not attend. And that's kind of the end of it. So it wasn't rude to offer, but it's also not rude to decline. Very reasonable. Yeah. And now it's time for Intermezzo. Intermezzo. So this episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. And with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. And by the way, HelloFresh now owns every plate. So we love both. So you can skip the trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. What I love about HelloFresh is that they have multiple meal plan choices. I love meal plan choices. I went with Fit and Wholesome because I'm wholesome. So our boxes are arriving soon and we're going to report back. We're going to let you know how it went. Uh, We're very excited. And for you out there, go to HelloFresh.com slash RBW free and use code RBW free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash RBW free with code RBW free. And now it's time for Intermezzo. Intermezzo. Did you know we have merchandise? No. (laughs) (laughs) Leah, you didn't? Well, it's true. There's mugs, there's tote bags, there's t-shirts, there's pillows, there's stationery, custom stationery, boxes of stationery, all sorts of great stuff. So go to our website and check it out. And we're always adding to the pillow collection. Yes. Anytime something comes up on our show, which is like, put that on a pillow. We do. (laughs) (laughs) So check it out. So our next question is, quote, I had an initial appointment with a personal development coach. And when he was late without notice or explanation, warned him that I'd be moving on with my day after 15 minutes. Hours later, he apologized for not showing up and said that things got busy. He wasn't unprofessional about it, but I consider this, on the first appointment especially, a serious etiquette crime and a potential deal breaker. Are there reasons, other than documented emergencies, and what kind, that would justify someone overlooking this kind of first impression and giving the professional a second chance? How could I tactfully, but firmly, set the tone for this never happening again if I decided to work with him? This person is a personal development coach. Uh Uh-huh. Being on time 
Is like the whole thing. Is the whole thing. I, <laughs> they didn't tell you they weren't going to be there. But well, Leah, things got busy. And But then hours <laughs> later, things got busy mm-hmm. after you were like, hey. Yeah. So I think the idea that they are a personal development coach is at odds mm. with their behavior. Right. And I don't think that I would comfortably be able to hire someone who behaves in such a manner. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we know how I feel about this sort of thing. (laughs) But let me just say, I get that things happen. People are late. I've been late. It has happened. And you message. You message people when you're late. Emergencies happen. Stuff comes up. I mean, I get all that. This is not what happened here. This is not what happened here. This is just somebody who lost track of time. And so, dear letter writer, let me just save you some money. 99% of being successful in life is showing up. That's the whole game. Just showing up, showing up for your job, showing up for your friends, showing up for your relationships, showing up at the gym, showing up like that's most of life. And so the fact that this person can't do that. I mean, like, that's the whole thing. Also, the sentence where our literary said, are there reasons other than documented emergencies and what kind that would justify someone overlooking this kind of first oppression and giving the professional a second chance? You didn't even mention they wasted your time. Yeah, that's a huge. Etiquette they part. wasted your time and they're supposed to be a professional development, development coach and they're coach. wasting your time. Yeah, no, that's not good. But it's actually never the etiquette crime. It's the cover up. And like, okay, we lost track of time. I get it. Okay. You know, our days sometimes escape us. Perhaps, hypothetically, I've heard it happens. And so, okay. But like, how did we recover from that? And that's where the rubber does not beat the road here. It does not appear that this person is sufficiently mortified. I don't think so at all. If I missed an appointment for a job. Yeah, a paying client. I would be mortified. I would apologize. I would offer something. Let me give you one session free. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would have to do significantly more than what this personal development coach has done. And I uh, things do come up, but usually when things come up, you either text or there's a full explanation when it's emergency. I'm sorry to get back to you. This thing happened with my family, blah, 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 blah. I think we all understand that. As Nick said, that's not what this is. That's not this. No. So I'm sorry, no. I think you're being very charitable to even consider the possibility of working with this person again. I think you're being extremely charitable. So if this were me, I know enough about this person to know that I don't think this is my style in terms of how I schedule things and how I treat my time. So I don't think this would be the right personal development coach for me. Um, If you want to give them another chance, and uh, I probably wouldn't, but if you feel so inclined, because you're feeling very charitable, then I think you would just need to have a very polite, very direct conversation, which is like, hey, that wasn't how I like to operate. And so is that a one-off or is that just sort of your style? Do you actually have like a looser relationship to time and time management? Maybe you do. In which case, like I'm probably not the right client for you. Or if that was a one-off, then like, oh, now you know that that doesn't work for me. So we're gonna have to all make an effort to like not let that happen again. I think that would be the only solution if you didn't want to just like cut them off. And I think our letter writer um, is already leaning towards it being a potential deal breaker. They just are wanting to be charitable. And I think you don't have to be charitable. This per- this is clearly not that this person had an emergency. It's okay to bounce. Yeah, you definitely have my permission. <laughs> Nick's already bounced for you. Oh, yeah. I- and I'd be delighted to talk to this person on your behalf <laughs> and let them know why that's happening if they are unclear. So feel free to pass along their email. I already have a template. <laughs> So our next question is, quote, I love a deal and getting stuff on sale. So when someone compliments something I'm wearing, I'll often say, thanks, I got it on sale. I also love sharing the deals I find with others. But someone just told me that they were offended by this because it made it sound like I think they can't afford to buy things at full price. Is it rude to tell people about things I bought that were on sale and giving them the info in case they might be interested? What a great question. I I think I've been in this conversation with people. So I I think this is familiar. Definitely. I always like to look at things first the way that I would take it if I was on the receiving end. And how would you take it? You know, I come from a long line of professional yard sailors. Yeah. I have a lot of friends who love like vintage shopping online. They love a good deal. Mm -hmm. And I've been in many conversations where I'll compliment and they'll be like, thanks, I found it for like $5. And then they tell me what the store was. And I've never taken it like an insult. Right. And also, who likes paying full price? Like, who's that person? Like, oh, no, thank you. I would rather just actually pay more for the same thing. 
Like there's not that person. There's not, right? I don't think so. No. I recently was in a conversation where, you know, I buy all my glasses as sunglasses. Like your reading glasses or like just sunglasses? My glasses that I use to see far away. Oh, all your distant glasses. So all your driving glasses. Yes. I'll buy them at a sunglasses store. So you get very fun frames and they're significantly cheaper than if you go to an eyeglasses store and then I'll just have them put my... Oh, so we're not like driving at night with sunglasses. No, they're not even sunglasses. I'm using sunglasses frames. All right. So you have fun frames because they're intended to be sunglasses, but you put in regular lenses. And I put in regular lenses and it's always significantly cheaper that way as well. I see. Oh, you've had a loophole. Okay. So I recently told somebody this information when they were complimenting my glasses. And when I read this question, I thought, oh no, was I insulting this person? (laughs) I was just genuinely excited that that I was like, you can get all the frames you want. You just buy them and bring them. And you save money, you know? I wasn't in any way assuming that that person needed to save money. I I think when people are sharing, like when people are like, oh, I I found this for 25 cents. They're they're excited. Yeah. No, because it's like a treasure hunt. People like treasure hunts. It's a treasure hunt. And who wouldn't get excited? Yeah. So I, I think it's not rude. I think the only thing is there might be a way to say it in some tone that conveys the wrong thing. And so I guess it's a tone issue. I guess if you were like, hey, I've noticed that- I've noticed that you need new shoes and yeah, I don't even know what the toad is. It also seems to me like you're in the same boat as me living week to week. Would you also like to get this great deal on glasses? (laughs) (laughs) That's not the way to say it. But I don't think that's what anybody's trying to say. Yes. As someone who's also financially struggling, (laughs) clearly you would be interested in this information I'm about to give you. (laughs) So let me give it to you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't think anybody's saying it like that. If you are saying it like that, don't say it like that. Right, okay. So our next question is, quote, I'm spending the night with my boyfriend. He has a friend crashing for the night, so he won't have a long commute to work. This morning at 7 a.m., this person comes into our room without knocking and helps themselves to the lotion in my boyfriend's bathroom. The door was not locked, but it was closed. We were scantily clad, but mostly covered. But I'm livid at the audacity. Again, it's not my house, but I can't help but feel like an unspoken boundary was crossed. Am I blowing this out of proportion? How can I navigate this without seeming like I'm making rules for a roof I don't live under? I would definitely agree that a boundary was crossed. Yes. And actually what I wrote down was, does the Leah rule about in-laws apply here? I say family is different than somebody. Here's the thing. Well, let's just clarify what that rule is. Okay, which is, that's a good idea. In general, Leah feels, <laughs> and she's not incorrect, that if there's an issue with an in-law, the person whose parent that is needs to be the point person for addressing that issue, right? Yes. I though if, if I'm sleeping and somebody walks into my room without knocking, I have no trouble, whoever it is, being like, what are you doing? <laughs> right. But I guess, would we not defer to the boyfriend to have a conversation with his friend about like, hey, dude, you got to knock. Oh, I think if there's a conversation later, I would be like, can you go do this? But I mean, in the moment, I think I would in feel comfortable moment. saying, what's going on right now? Oh, just getting lotion. And then I would be like, really, dude? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what is that conversation? <laughs> you know, I would just want to voice would my eye roll. I would need to voice my, I don't know. I don't really get the feeling. Did we tell our boyfriend we were irritated? I do not know what has happened since. It does feel like we got this email probably from their phone while they were still under the covers and still mad that this happened. I think we can tell our boyfriend, that's wild that your friend did that. Yes. I think the next move here is let's talk to the boyfriend and like see how they feel about this. Are they cool about this? Are they also annoyed? Like what's their deal? And I think that will tell you a lot about your boyfriend and this relationship. And so I think that's a good conversation. And then also this may never come up again. They may, this person might not stay in the house. Yeah, like how often is this happening? But I think it's good to know like, oh, what are the door closed rules in this house? I think that's good to know. And I feel like if this person stayed at the house again and they were there, I'd have to make a joke. I would have to make a joke. I'd be like, gonna lock the door since you seem to just walk into places. I bought some lotion for you. <laughs> I'm leaving it in your room. Yeah, or you'd be like, hey, we're putting the lotion in your room so you don't feel the need to come in while we're sleeping. <laughs> Okay. I don't know if that's the polite direct approach we would advocate, but 
It would definitely get the point across. It's definitely off base to just walk into someone's room at when they're sleeping. Yes. Oh, and just to clarify, the rule is that if a door is closed, we would knock. I think that's like the general rule. Like we don't enter rooms that might be occupied without knocking. So I think that applies to like bedrooms for sure. Bathrooms, offices. Like, is there a room that might have a closed door that might be occupied where we would just like walk in? No. Right? I feel like that's actually kind of universal. I think it's very universal. And I wouldn't even knock at 7 a.m. I would be like, I can live without that lotion. Yeah, actually, that's the big question. Is like, how urgent was this? This wasn't even urgent. Was this urgent? And I think this is, this is a great word for it. The audacity. People just being like, I deserve to have this lotion. I'm just going to walk in while you're sleeping. And I could see like, oh, these are buddies and they've been buddies for a long time. And like, this is just the relationship we have. So I could see like how we arrived here. But yeah, it's not great. Yeah, I can absolutely see that they're like, Two dudes, they went to college together, whatever. We just have an open door lotion room agreement. But I think you can step in and be like, hey, I'm not comfortable with this agreement. Can we knock on doors when they're closed? Yeah. And I think you are well within your rights to ask that. And I think I would just bring it up with my boyfriend, have that conversation. Hey, if I'm going to be sleeping over, I would love it if we could just, you know, suggest to your friends that maybe they just don't walk in. And get a double deadbolt. <laughs> or we could tell our friends they have to wear chains around their legs so we can hear them coming. <laughs> Or we get one of those dog invisible fences that are like, give a little shock if they cross a boundary. Zaps them when they do it. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Or we go to the old standby bear trap. (laughs) Get some bear traps. (laughs) I don't know why we didn't bring that up first. So do you have questions for us about bear traps or anything else? Let us know. You can let us know through our website, where you're raised by wolves.com, or you can leave us a voicemail or send us a text message, 267 call RBW. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Oh, Leah, one more thing. What? Have you signed up for Patreon yet? I have. Me too. You out there, have you signed up for Patreon yet? No? Well, go to our website, where you're raised by wolves.com. Click on monthly membership, check it out, because we would really appreciate it if you'd support our show. We love your support. We would. So please do that, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.